choose his or her partner in the lab to work together. That's number one. And then the second thing, just I want you to get familiar with two things. Uh, the first thing, the digital multimeter. Did anybody use DMMM before? Great. So you have, okay, that's, that will make it easy. So to be just today, it's going very easy for you. So that's the type of uh, uh, DMM uh, we're going to use. It's uh, uh, BK test bench 388A. And let me just show you the important things. All of all DMM are the similar, very similar. If you look at the to the right here, you will uh, you will see. Uh, that's used to measure the voltage and the ohm, the resistance. Yeah, it, it's written also hertz frequency, but we don't care about it right now. When you when you want to measure voltage or uh, ohm, you got to uh, have a uh, wire connected here. And the second one we're going to use the co the com terminal that will be like the ground com. Okay, so. Let's say that you are going to uh, measure today the voltage of the power supply of the trainer that you're going to use uh, during this semester. First of all, you make sure that uh, always it's off before you do anything. That's you see here, that's off here, the, the, the switch. And you have uh, the voltage. That's the voltage you're going to, when you want to measure voltage, and some DMM, they, ha, they, they distinguish between DC uh, and AC voltage. In this DMM, DC or AC are uh, on the same scale here. And you see the scale will start uh, from 400 millivolt up to, I think, 750. All right. So you choose the scale according to the magnitude of the voltage that you want to measure to get better accuracy. Let's say, for example, I want to measure uh, 30 voltage. 30 volt to measure, you got, you see, I make the, the scale now bigger. You have 400 milli, means the max is 400 millivolt. So if you want to measure 30 volts, you are going to use 40. So you got to make the switch of the DMM going to 40. That's very simple. So today, we're not going to measure current or uh, uh, Oh, just we're going to measure voltage, just to get used to the thing. So these are the two things. And of course, you'll have here a switch that uh, you can switch between DC and AC because both measurements, DC and AC, they are on the same scale as you see here in the voltage. So you got to tell the DMM, I'm going to use DC. If you put an AC by mistake, you will see they are getting 0 0.1. It's not the same thing. So make sure that it's on the DC. All right. About the other uh, 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 terminal here for the DMM, this one, when we need to measure the current, but we're not going to use today because I want to confuse you. And this one, we are, we are use, we're using to measure a, a large amount of current up to 20 amp. So we are not using this two to the left. We're only using two to the right. And remember this one, that's the common. You call it to the ground. Well, the trainer that you are going to use today and by the way the manual of the lab or uh, this instrument uh, uh, sheet i created i uploaded to canvas so you can read any time to get familiar with it before any experiment this is the trainer you're going to use let's just focus on few things we're going to do today because there are many functions this trainer can be used in analog and digital experiment all right we are using for analog now that's the switch the power switch off on. Make sure when you go to the lab, the first thing you do, two things you're going to do. These two knobs, that's the voltage magnitude control knobs. The one to the left to have a, 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 positive, a positive voltage. That's to control the positive voltage. And you can see here the positive, right? And the one to the right, it's the voltage control knob that's for the negative voltage, DC. What we're working on now is DC. So this we're going to work. Today, we're going to just focus on one thing because it's the first lab. We're going to focus on the positive. So you are going to use the one left. When you go to the lab, 
you got to make sure before you start uh, uh, everything is safe. Of course, you don't have um, uh, high voltage or anything, not very dangerous, but um, sometimes if you touch uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, uncovered wire and maybe like a few milliamp, just to feel thing a little bit, not very harmful, but we have to make sure that everything is fine. So you turn this knob completely counterclockwise direction. Why? To get to the minimum value. And you make sure this is off before you start an experiment. Then let's say that you're going to start uh, uh, the experiment today we're going to do. We're going to measure only what we're going to do. We're going to only to measure the voltage of the uh, power supply, the booster side. So what we're going to do, uh, you will get, you will see like a box and has wires. So you get these wires and you got to uh, uncover both ends, like quarter of inch, because you are going to wrap one here around uh, this uh, positive one and one about the ground one. So you have like two wires coming from here. And everything is off. All right. So uh, let's now go to another uh, file. The voltage of the power supply. Like, if you want us to like test it with the additional voltage first before we put on the wall, before we put the wall. You are going to, you, are, you are going to use uh, DMM to measure the, the the voltage of the power supply, and uh, but just uh, before you turn on the DMM uh, or the power supply, you got to make first the connection. So that's the the experiment, and it's uploaded on Canvas. You can read it on the computer there in the lab. But just I'll give you just simple things, so it will not be late. Uh, these are the steps. Uh, very simple, very simple. Uh, let me go to the diagram first. Yes. So that's you see that's the connection you're going to make, uh, as I explained. So you got you get the red wire. And uh, you connect it with the terminal going to measure the voltage with the positive of the bar supply. And you are going to have another uh, wire uh, connecting the ground. You choose different color with the common. So now everything is set. And then uh, you start uh, to, to switch on this power switch, turn it on. So you'll find the lid uh, is light, means that uh, the power is on. Then um, uh, after that, you turn this uh, 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 DMM, uh, put it in the voltage. You can put it in 40 volts, for example. The scale of 40, it means maximum 40. Uh, well, you will never reach 40, anyway. And then you will start uh, uh, turning this uh, knob, voltage knob, in the clockwise direction to read the voltage here. So this is the way you're going to use the, the, uh, are going to use it to measure uh, the, uh, the voltage. I, I believe in the experiment, I, uh, it was mentioned that you need to adjust it to get how many volts here? Did anybody, three volts, right? Yeah, so you need to adjust to three. And you need the DMM. Maybe you'll not get exactly three, maybe you get 2.99 or get 3.1, it's okay, it should be, the closest thing to three. Okay. Uh, then you are going to record your uh, uh, reading in this table. You are going to change, you are going to follow the steps of the experiment. You're going to change the scale of the DMM. First, you are just in uh, 40 volt max, and you have three volt. Then you are going to start to decrease and increase the uh, scale of the volt on the DMM according to the steps here. Why? I want you to, to know or learn what is the best scale. All of them, they're going to give you reading, but some, they will not be very accurate because the scale, maybe it's too low or too high for the voltage that you want to measure. Like if you want to measure three volt and you put, for example, on 400, maybe you get small amount. If you were in a very low, like 300 millivolt, you will not get the whole thing. So I, don't, I just want you to experiment by yourself to learn that it's important to adjust the scale of the volt on the DMM to measure the right voltage. 
So I will give you a step to do that, and they are going to fit this table. You put here the range, for example, if you are using 40 uh, volt scale, and see what is the reading here. Uh, 3 volt, maybe you get 2.99. Okay, like that. Maybe you get uh, anything else. And then write your observation, how close it is. And then it changed, for example, to uh, for, I think, uh, 1000 millivolt, as it's mentioned in the steps of the experiment. So now you learn about uh, the scale of the VMM and the relationship between it and the accuracy of the measured voltage. Then the second part is very simple. You will go to the uh, trainer. You turn everything off and uh, uh, the knob will be completely uh, counterclockwise direction and then measure the voltage. Why? Because you want to know what is the minimum voltage that you can get from this power supply. And I didn't mention the scale. You change the scale as you like till you get the most accurate. The precision is high. Step two. Uh, you start to uh, turn this knob completely in the clockwise direction. Why? To measure the voltage to get the maximum volt. And that's it. And you adjust the scale. I'm, I'm not mentioning which scale, 40, 400, 30. I, I left it for you open because supposedly you learn from the first part how you adjust the scale by the steps. And this one, I leave it free for you to choose the scale and then you write the result in the table. Uh, which scale that you use. You are right here when it completely turn counterclockwise direction. What's the measure of voltage, the range that you use, and so that, that's your choice. And then you write your result, and then there are three questions you can answer. And then I will sign your sheet if you print it. If you didn't print it, this time is okay. Next time you'll print it before you come to the lab. So I make sure that you did the experiment and I signed the paper that you did the experiment. I will upload every time for the lab. Uh, Word document. So you will be able, when you download it, you type. You just type. I'm not going to ask you to write many things because everything will be written, just be filled the space, maybe answer some questions in the beginning. But when you do the project that I'm giving to you, I will ask you to write the report, you write the objective, you write everything by yourself. But this will be towards the end till you get used uh, how to. Uh, uh, do the experiment, how to write, how to read the report, and uh, you learn how to write the report. Because it's very important how to document your work, but just I'll take it step by step with you. Today, it shouldn't take long time, and that's okay. And uh, I want to get familiar with the lab because I'm going to depend on uh, teaching this course on the lab after that. When I teach you Ohm's law, I want first yet you do, you do the experiment, and you can do it fast, if you can do it fast, you finish it. That would be great to help you when we start to explain the, the lecture, the theoretical part. That will be uh, very helpful. And uh, in, uh, the, this experiment is very simple. It will not take time because of the first one, experiment number zero. But after that, you will have many things to do inside the lab. You'll be efficient and fast. That's why I'm, as, uh, I'm asking everyone should have one partner in the lab. And at the same time, you got to learn microcap 12 the simulation package. I'm going to, uh, I just have problem with my computer for, uh, I have something called uh, um, screen uh, recorder, uh, it's called Mac screen, uh, if you know this uh, one, it record the screen. So I cannot uh, uh, do the simulation and record at the same time. So I'm asking IT to fix the software so I can record for you the video. So you can watch it, how you use this, uh, simulation. It's free, by the way, and you can download it in your computer uh, or your laptop in your home. And uh, I will give you an instruction how you download. It will be very helpful that when you do this, you will do uh, so in the lab. You can do the simulation at home, and then you come, you have some solution result, some calculation, and then you do the lab. You'll find yourself you understand everything before even the lecture. Lectures so will we'll do some practice. It will be easy. Okay. So uh, now everybody will. Uh, uh, Choose the partner, we'll go down to the lab, and then when you need any material, equipment, anything like that, uh, it, it, the old answer is there in the village. But if you need, like, there are even wires, but if you need anything, just go to the lab assistant and ask him, will be in the window and ask him what you want, right? Yes.
Uh, so the tables themselves. Uh, uh, since we have partners, do we just yes. like have the? Do we like keep the same data and have like one? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The same. Yes, yes. You work together and one report, okay. and both both in both names on that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any question? Yes. So the computer center will be kept. Yeah, there's computer that. Yes. Okay. And so, do you want us to print this out? Yeah, but not 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 today. not today because uh, that's the first one. That's why I collect number zero. So next time before you come to the lab, uh, you, you guys print. Okay. Yeah. And we both work on one. Both work on one. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. And this is the only thing we need to turn in. Basically, this filled out. That's filled out. Type it and uh, and then uh, subtract. Yes. Okay. And you can type your name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And you can type your name. I didn't. I, I didn't. I think I didn't leave. Uh, space here for the name you can just type your name it's all document just uh, feel free oh, all word document yes okay. so just to feel free for example this is the page uh the, the cover page then you can uh, type uh, your name here that's the name of the uh, the the lab button just here that's it type everything type so be easy to read yes After, after you can just uh, it's better if you have uh, uh, you can have like uh, I used when I was a student to have something called like a lab note or and this lab note like a, a tablet and then we write our observation our everything and then when we go home just we use it to type in the lab report that would be a good practice if you do that even in project you keep just to keep it only for lab and project any observation, any circuit, anything, and then you organize in the lab report. After. So the lab partners work on the same lab report. They don't do the same. both. You, you divide your work together as a teamwork, and then when you do the report, this is simple. I mean, I I know. I mean, uh, you can do anybody can do by by himself or herself. Uh, but after that, you you will have many tasks, so you can guys divide it between uh, yourselves, and uh, it will be like. Uh, 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 a section for lab management that you write uh, the name of the uh, person that who did such task and then the task done. So be like a small table, I give it to you the name and the task done and the uh, time and the second and that's it. We call it lab management. Because after like uh, after the um, Another one month. I, I will. I will. I will upload the file for the project in two weeks, so you can start thinking about it. But just first now, uh, right now, I want everybody to get used to the lab, the instrument. We still have to use the DMM to measure the current, to measure the resistance, to measure the power, make the connection, and all the things. So that would take like two weeks. Yes. Any any question? Yeah. 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 I already created. Uh, on canvas like that yeah and uh, when you uh submit it after you type convert it to pdf because there is a restriction in canvas for the submission it's pdf submission one file let's say that you have other files that you want to at attach it and then convert it to pdf one single file to be easy for grading and looking at and then after we upload it that's when you sign and date it uh, yes, uh, this time, yes, but uh, in the following labs, uh, you, you will uh, you will uh, print because you got to write the result in it uh, before you type it. You got uh, to do that. So I, I will sign to make sure that because I will be like uh, uh, mentoring you guys, then I just uh, make sure that you guys work. You did it. You finish it. Then I sign. Yeah. And uh, when uh, um, yeah, we can agree about that. But this is the, I mean, from next time, you just print it and then uh, we'll sign. I am thinking about something else. This is the system that has been used here. I'm trying to think about another way, like uh, if only you uh, if only you, you bring only one sheet and, or I create one sheet, uh, I'll create it to make it easy. You don't have to print anything if you can use it in your laptop. All right, let's make this easy. I'm not going to follow the old instruction uh, done here. I will, I will write a list like the attendance, and then I will uh, sign 
uh, I will sign in the front of the name when I uh, when I observe that uh, this group they finished their work, they did their work. Because I want to make sure, because according to my experience before, uh, most of the students they work because they're excited about working in the lab. But there are few sometimes that they rely on the partner to do the work. And another problem I faced, some they rely on the partner to do the whole lab report work, writing everything, and just send the, you, you put the name on it. So I don't, I don't like that to be done. So I have my ways to make sure that everybody is working and everybody not overloading his or her partner. So I'll create the sheet, all right? I will, I will do my own system. And you do not have to to print it for me to sign it, but you can print it for yourself so you can put your result or read it easily uh, in, in an easy way. Okay. Uh, that will that's a, a simple manner to, to manage uh, the lab. So that will be a choice, but I believe that will be better if you print it. Uh, so you can read it in the lab and do I, I I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I saw some computers there, but is it everywhere? I will see now. If you have computer at every station, okay, you can use it. Uh, and uh, uh, make sure that this week, for the weekend, to download a new laptop, it's there in the lab and the other in the library and other uh, lecture room. You have micro. I ask them to download MicroCap 12, and this software it was. Uh, uh, it used to be you buy it by thousand, and now it's just uh, this year they make it free. I think because the company, the this one they close something like this, and they make it free for everybody. Which is they used here to uh, use some kind of simulation called LT Spice. Then I was talking to uh, my student uh, electronic course, and then they said that, that the, it was kind of not a nice one. This one is much better. So if you get used to it, because there'll be a part of your assignment in the, in the lab, you will do calculation, simulation, practical part. Then you will understand the material very well. Do you have any question? Yes. How is there a look at the instructions uh, if we are, can't use the computer and do the lab at the same time? Do we just have like, someone with the computer while we're doing the lab nearby? Or do we have to like, Write down the lab uh, or like the result person then put on the computer. Oh, you want to write the, the result uh, on the computer directly? So, like the instructions are on the computer, right? Yes, yes, they are. So, how are we going to have like one person in the computer up there while like we're in the lab down there and like one person reads the results and one person that uh, it's called is in the lab? Because you said we can't have like the computer and the lab at the same time, we have to do the lab person then. So, right out of the no, I mean, if the computer is available in your station oh. and you can open the door and you are reading, it's, if it's there available, because I, I don't think that it's uh, there's computer everywhere. There are some parts, some parts that uh, they don't have. If you have computer and available in your station and you open it and just you read, it, you read the, the instruction and you follow the steps, you will do that. Okay. But not all of it. I think. Uh, if you if you if you went to the lab before, like like two parts. Yeah, there's the one. computer part, and there's the lab. We are working in the downstairs, so I think you would um, not be available, like except only a couple of computers. I think that's why it's it's better if you just bent it and you have. Any question? Okay, so all right, let's go downstairs and. Uh, uh, you can uh, choose your partner there. You just stop by the library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 